Now I've got what I believe is a piece of oak on here, around about eight inches long, 200 mil by two and three quarter inches, which is about 70 mil. I'm gonna get this trued up first of all, get a tenant on the end so I can get it into my standard C jaws on the chuck. Plan on this project to turn this into a vase. This is sort of a, a bit inspired by Wayne with his string pull, and I've done one of these before with the flowers, but I'm going to mix this up a bit rather than put a uh, like a black spray paint or the, the black lacquer as a base. I'm going to be using the powder based uh, water soluble dyes that I've done, been using the last few videos for the base. And the reason for that is because I don't want it jet black. I've quickly roughly trued this up, got it into the jaws on the chuck. And the vase, I suspect, is going to probably be somewhere in the region, sort of like between my thumbs there. Just allows me a bit more room on this end if I do a string pull. I've got the shape I want. Um, I've got a couple of cracks here. That one's very small. That one's a bit bigger. Uh, don't th think it will go too deep in there. So the next thing I want to do is this is going to come down to about here somewhere. So the next thing I'm going to do is just going to go down in there with a drill bit and then I can then just hollow out the inside to hopefully end up with some nice even walls and then finally get it all sanded up. all the hollowing out on here the walls on here are just about five mil thick and they come down to the point of about there where they then f start getting thicker and there's going to be a fairly thick base in the bottom there just to give it a little bit of weight now i have this long crack here and a smaller crack here now unfortunately they do both go through but i can't do anything about those at the minute because uh if I put CA glue on, it will stop all the colouring on the outside. This is just more of a, a demo practice piece. I've sanded it through the grits, 180, 240, 320 and 400. And even the inside as well. For the inside, a pair of forceps, the bent nose ones are brilliant because it means you can usually get more into the bottom. Don't hold your fingers in there like that when you're holding the forceps. Hold it sort of fairly flat like that because then if something does grab, it's just going to fling out your hands and it's not going to take your fingers. Now the outside to start with, I'm going to use the bright red that I've got on these um, powder dyes. And this will probably be two or three coats. And so I'm just going to put the lathe on, on there just under 300. And I want to put this really on as a base coat it's going to make the grain raise because these are water based so 
so when it's dried which won't take too long I will then sand them back with the 400 again now by slowly building up like this even with the coats I'm putting on now you're not flooding it too much so that you get runs everywhere and it flies off And you can probably see there by the point of when I'd got to the end of each each end and come back again, the bright red had turned into, into a sort of more of a, a light, almost like pinky colour, which is where it's drying so quick. And the good thing about these dyes, because they are a dye, you still see all the grain in the wood. So hopefully you can see there where this is drying so quick. I mean, that is touch dry already down here. So I'll just leave this another minute or two. I'll sand it back with the 400 grit paper I use because it is right raising the grain a little bit not much then i'll give it another coat and then i'll probably sand it back again and give it a proper third coat this has had a few coats of red uh, after each coat of red i just re-sanded it back with the 400 paper just to make it as smooth as it was uh, just to get rid of the grain that's rising after about the two coats i just didn't have to sand it back anymore because i was then putting on a third and fourth coat and it wasn't make no difference to the grain whatsoever so it stayed as smooth as anything so that's what i wanted because now when i put the black on to darken this up it will therefore not raise the grain anymore and shouldn't need any more sanding back so the and the idea with the the black is and i'm just going to put the lathe on again so i'm running about 250 there I want the this to go almost black but I want to see red through it and that might sound a bit odd but I did it just recently with my last project where I've got a finial on a Christmas ornament and it's a, a very sort of like deep burgundy red and if I put the black over this So the black as it goes on is going to react with the red and more or less mix so it just becomes a darker red each pass you go across so if i stop that now already hopefully you can see there it's there's black all in the grain there where it's gone into the, all those little parts but the red is still showing through and i just want to keep building this up as i go along until it gets dark enough so this is probably about as far as i'm going to go with the black and hopefully you can see here what i've done is i've gone a bit thicker with the black at the base and thinner on the top so hopefully I, it's hopefully it was shown on the camera there these bits of lighter areas in the grain here actually have a red tinge to them and certainly where these sort of flashes are in here they're red as well so it gives a totally different effect. I mean, there's an awful lot of black on here, which is what I want, because <clears throat> it needs to be a, a, as a black for when you put the iridescent paints on to, to really make them sort of shine and pull out and show up properly. But with these bits of red in here, hopefully it's going to give something a little bit different. This was just left to dry overnight, so it was left for probably about 20 hours, I suppose, before I come out here. I've given it two coats of the spray cellulose sand and sealer and each time i've just knocked it back with the gold nye web which is equivalent of about a thousand grit and i've just really for just given it a coat inside one coat inside don't know how well this shows up on the camera i really do hope it does show there is a very slight red tinge to this black and this is what i was after um, rather than having the full jet black as i said this is a wayne inspired piece so i've gone for the, the joe sonia iridescent paints and I've gone I think probably for Wayne's favorite colors as well which is the violet the gold and the green I haven't done these for a while I'm not sure whether I'm even put enough paint on these I know that you can over put too much on so I'm going to go for the violet first and I've got a reasonable length string in here which I've soaked <coughs> The first thing is pull that out it's 
so apologies where my hand's getting in the way. And if you've never seen these before, I'm just using wool here. I find wool is ideal because it's it's just more bendy. If, if you pull it, it will go where it's pulled. If you use string, it tends to be a bit more coarser and harder. Um, no reason why you can't use string because you can get different effects with it. But at least this way, as I pull it down, it's naturally going to go the way it, it's, it's been pulled. Whereas if you use string, it might wave a lot more and possibly lift off the work. So I've just made sure that it's all sat down there. And the idea is to just pull this down. And I'll keep the string held down as well. And you can really see the violet on here now because what happens with these iridescent paints is that they thin and that's when the colour comes out. Uh, as that dries more, it will look even a lot better. Now, all of these as well, I did thin down with the Joe Sonia Flow Medium. Uh, it's very hit and miss as to how much I put in there because of because obviously I didn't measure how much paint I put in there. When you squeeze them out of these, you're sort of like in the lap of gods of how much you get in there. So there's no real hard and fast ratio. So I'm going to do this one opposite way and you can do these in whichever pattern you like so you don't have to put them all close you can probably crisscross them but that might not have such a good effect and it's really just all about experimentation sometimes so let's just keep that low down so this one doesn't have so much paint on it see there it's a lot less paint where it's actually pulled more of a gap at the top that's pulled the red from within the paintwork here so that gold has actually had an added effect on the background and i think that's probably what the purple has done there as well but it'll be interesting to see as these dry and this one is the green now this one i think i put a lot more paint in compared to the other two certainly compared to the gold wave these a different way just pat that all down just to make sure that the paint that is on there is in contact with the vase and then pull the same way now there is certainly no reason you can't pull at different angles I just try to use the stick like this way just to try and keep everything pulled down as much as possible. That's also as you rotate this pulling the red out from underneath. That's really interesting this has got a green and a red to it so I'm going to let these dry um, and then come back. This has now dried and I've just totally changed the camera angle just in case it just gives a different perspective as to what's going on here with the colour. I'm going to say this purple looks an awful lot deeper and more vibrant uh, than what I'm usually used to seeing it like and I think that's probably where the red has more or less come out of the black and sort of just enhanced it a bit and the gold I don't know how well it shows on the camera there, but it's where these green lines go down. That's where the red is showing through. I've got a bit of red there, a bit of red, literally wherever the grain is running. The red is coming through on the gold, which really looks nice. So it just adds an extra element there. And the green doesn't really have much an effect on there. It's only if you look at extremes where you look right across not so much that side but down from the other side down the edge of the grain and you do get a slight different coloration there 
I suppose a bit like a, a creamy red, um, very much like what's like in the base grain here. This is a test piece. What I'm going to do next is just going to part this off, just tidy up the base a little bit, and I'm going to give this some coat of spray lacquer just so I can see if this comes up any different. Now to summarise this up, I've got to say the effects on this have come out far better than I ever expected. The background on here, first of all, you, I mean, when you look at it at a distance, it's depending on what sort of light you've got it in. I mean, I've got it in a fairly bright light here, and I can see it has a very, very, very dark red. So that background for starters is really nice. That's the sort of thing I was after. I didn't want a jet black. And what's happened here is that as the the paints have gone over it, the, and it really shows up on the gold here, you've got all these red streaks coming through. Now the green, it hasn't had too much effect, but it, it, there is some elements of red in there. And what's happened with the purple, it's really, because of the red in the, in there, it's really made the purple a lot more vibrant. And I've got to say, I'm really, really pleased with that. In some ways, it's a bit of a shame that I've got the cracks in there. I didn't fully finish off the inside so well, but that would make a really, really nice finished piece. Wasn't going to leave it there. I decided I wanted to experiment a bit more to see if it was just a one-off. And what I did then is I got a piece of <coughs> spoiled silver birch, which was really, really punky, got some splits in it. And this time what I've done is I've done this with a blue. And there are elements in here where you can still see the blue. Because of the spoiledness and the, the changes of the wood in there, the, the colourings take different effects. And what I found this time though was that I put the Joe Sonia paints on a lot thicker and the gold just doesn't look so prominent as it normally does with the gold so it has had some effect on there the red <coughs> looks more of a washed out red um, so I think the blue has had some effect in there as well and the purple has actually come up really really nice again it's very much like this one it's prominent in a different way the purples are I think become more vibrant but overall it hasn't had the same sort of effect as that one so i thought i will have a go at a third one now this is the third one i did this is a piece of i believe possibly apple i've got some cracks in here odd cracks in here which is really from knots in the wood and it looks really really nice this one i've done on the blue very much like this one and it's a bit of a shame really because the the, the lacquer on this has actually took so much effect that it's actually took out a lot of the blue tinges that I had in this because when I was spraying this I could actually still see bits of blue especially in the bottom here where it was which was hitting so the the base on this has actually gone fairly black um, which is like I say a little bit annoying now the difference I did with this one was though is that even though the the gold on here doesn't look like it's had any effect what I did before I put the gold on, I gave this another spray of blue over the top of, of the colour. And so that meant that the, the blue was still quite wet in the surface of the wood, even though it was touched dry, almost touched dry on the surface. And as I say, it hasn't had much effect on the gold. I think the red, it's there are some blue tinges in there. But what I did on here as well was when I did the, the, the red, and that's actually turquoise green, I actually, because the Joe Sonia paints are water-based, I actually sprayed some of the blue inside the paint. Gave it a bit of a mix, and then that's when I put it on the wall. So that's also probably where it's helped with getting some of the blue tinges in these two colours. Now to summarise this up, there's two things that I've learned from this. One, you can add colour to the Joe Sonia paints to give a different sort of effect. So you don't have to go for the basic colours you've got. The second thing I've found is if you want that sort of effect, and the reason why you get that effect is because of the deep grain. This is a piece of oak uh, that's, as I say, spotted birch, apple, two very, very smooth woods, not very deep grain like with the oak. And that's where all the red background has come through. And the reason I know that as well was because when I actually did this last one, when I was doing the string pull, when I lifted the string up, I could actually see all under the base of the string was blue paint. 
so the Josonia paints were actually going over the top but they were picking up underneath where you were touching all the blue. Now hopefully that's given you something to think about, uh, maybe you've got some questions, certainly do post them down below in the comments, it may give you some ideas to go off and do something else and I'd certainly be pleased to hear on what you do and how you get on. Thanks a lot for watching.